So the next thing I need to add here is my constructors. And as you know, we might have many or multiple constructors in our class. To generate a constructor, same menu, I'll go to source and then generate constructor using fields. And this will allow me to check which fields I want to include in my constructor. So if I want to allow my, um, my clients of the class to create an object of the student class using only the name, I can just select that name and click on generate. Now, before I click on generate, I can select the location where I want to have that um, constructor placed at in my code. I'll place it after the last instance variable, which was age. I'll make sure it's public. And you can check the omit call to default constructor super because this class is not inheriting from another class. So once you have these um, options selected, I'll click on generate. And you'll see I have immediately after the age here, let's add a line here. I have a public student, the constructor that only takes the name and it will set the instance variable name to the value of the parameter we pass to that constructor. If I want to add another constructor, same process, I'll go source, generate constructor using fields. If I want to have a constructor that takes all these parameters, I'll just check all of them. I can select all and then I'll place it after the first constructor that I have. So after the first constructor here, and then I'll click on generate. So this constructor will take all the instance variables and will set them inside my object. So remember, once you create at least one constructor in your class, the default constructor will not be available for you unless you implement it. So if you want to have the default constructor also, you can go to source, again, generate constructor using fields. I will deselect everyone and then click on generate. So that creates the default constructor for me. I can place it before this constructor and inside it, I can set the default values for my um, instance variables. So for example, this dot name, I'll make it equal to no name. Otherwise, it will just set the name to um, to be equal to null. I can do the same thing with the ID. So this dot ID, I can set the default ID, for example, to be equal to um, 500 or whatever value I want. Finally, I will generate my toString string method. So the toString string method returns a string representation of my object. So what information you want to return back when the toString method is called. Um, I can select all my fields here. Um, you can also select methods if you have specific methods that return um, values you want to include in your um, string representation of that object. So for example, if we had a method that calculates the tuition and you want to include the tuition in that um, return string, you can check that method um, too. So I'm selecting my fields, the name, the ID, the age, the GPA. Um, I'll place it at the end, so after the set age method. Um, and then you can select which string format you want to return the um, string as. So if you click on edit, it will show you the default template, which will have the class name and then the member name equal to that member value. If you want to change it, you can edit, you can create a new template you can use with your other classes. I'll leave it to the default. Um, I can check here the skip null values or leave it um, to display the null values. Uh, if you check the skip null values, it will not display any object. For example, the string, if it was equal to null, it will not include it in the um, return string. So any null values, so if the name was equal to null in this case, it will not include it in the return, uh, in the return string. So I'll just click on generate and you will see that I have the string dot to st or the to string method that's returning a string, the name of the class. Remember that was the first um, part of my string, which was student. And then the name is equal to the name, which is the instance variable. The ID is equal to ID, GPA is equal to GPA, age is equal to age. And it's surrounding these values with these square brackets. So let's see what will happen if we decided that we did not want to display the null values. I'll go again to source, generate to string. And since the to string method is already created here, it will ask me, do you want to replace it with a new one? I'll click on yes, select the same fields, and I will skip null values. So I will check skip null values, and then click on generate. Notice the to string method was replaced with this new one. And the difference is we added a conditional operator here. 
So if the name is not equal to null, display name, name equals to this um, instance variable name. Otherwise, just skip that value, just display, um, just display an empty string. 